First reading, a reading from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 16, verses 1 to 15, and 60 and 63. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abomination. Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, By origin and birth you are of the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite, and your mother Hiti. As for your birth, the day you were born you, navel cord was not cut. You were neither washed with water nor anointed, nor were you rubbed with salt, nor sweat in swaddling's clothes. No one looked on you with pity or compassion to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out on the ground as something loathsome the day you were born. Then I passed by and saw you weltering in your blood. I say to you, live in your blood and grow like a plant in the field. You grew and developed. You came to the age of puberty. Your breasts were formed. Your hair had grown, but you were still stark naked. Again, I passed by you and saw that you were now old enough for love. So I spread the corner of my cloak over you to cover your nakedness. I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you. You became mine, says the Lord God. Then I bathed you with water, washed away your blood, and anointed you with oil. I clothed you with an embroidered groan, put sandals of fine leather on your feet. I gave you a fine linen sash and silk robbers to wear. I adorned you with jewellery. I put bracelet on your arms, a necklace about your neck, a ring in your nose, pendant in your ears, and a glorious diadem open your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver. Your garments were of fine linen, silk, and embroidered cloth. Fine flour, honey, and oil were your food. You were exceedingly beautiful with the dignity of a queen. You were renowned among the nations for your beauty, perfect as it was, because of my splendor which I had bestowed on you, says the Lord God. But you were captived by your own beauty. You used your renown to make yourself a harlot, and you lavished your harlotry every passer by whose own you become. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you when you were a girl, and I will set up an everlasting covenant with you, that you may remember and be covered with confusion, and that you may be utterly silenced for shame, when I pardon you for all you have done, says the Lord God. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 19, verses 3 to 12. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning? The Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. I say to you, Whoever divorces his wife unless the marriage is unlawful and marries another commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, Not all can accept this word, but only to those 
whom it is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so. Some because they were made so by others. Some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. It is so unfortunate that we go through the records of the divorce rate, especially in our country, is too high and it is getting increased day by day or month by month. And today, Jesus is speaking about the holiness between a man and a woman, a married husband and wife. And Jesus drew back the attention of the people into the Old Testament, into the very beginning where God made man and woman. And Jesus very, clear, Jesus very clearly says that when a man shall leave father and mother and he join to his wife and the two shall become one body. What God has joined, no one separate. This is the holiness of the marriage, my dear friends. It is the encounter of the Lord. It is a bond with the Lord that you made as husband or as wife, not only to each other, but you vow yourselves into the covenant with the Lord that you will remain as one till the end. It is said that Jesus, after creating Adam, he saw something missing part in Adam so that he created the woman Eve and he saw now the creation is fulfilled. In the same way, when a man and a woman get themselves into one, there is a beautiful communion where intended by the Lord. It is a heavenly communion that is taking place, place on this earth. Therefore, my dear friends, I would rather invite you to rethink and to recollect about how your married life is going on. Going on. Is it a divine divine intervention? Is it a divine encounter that you are experiencing between you two? Or is it just a human relationship? It is it just being that in human forum? If it is in human forum only, my dear friends, it is very hard for you to go alone. Thereby, this should be in a divine matter because it is divinely, heavenly made. Thereby, let us always invite the Lord into our midst, into our family life so that you will encounter the Lord with the other and you will have this beautiful relationship between you two.